Okay, so I, my first dive in to see uh, what's going on. Um, it's pretty old and pretty dirty. Um, I do see some rust here, uh, particularly this area here, and there's some rust there. The uh, fuel lines seem to be, you know, have been worked upon uh, in the past. Um, so, uh, maybe you can see the rust a little bit better now, uh, right at the uh, um, at the light area there. Let's see if I can show it a little bit better. You see, it's a bit rusty. Uh, it has been leaking somewhere or being out. And about that bolt in the back is uh, pretty rusty. You see two different uh, types of seals that they have here. So they have had it open in the past. That's that's pretty clear. Um, but uh, all in all, not too bad. Quite quite a bit of dirt inside, but uh, you know. We can deal with that. Probably have to now completely take it apart anyway. <clears throat> I was doubtful if I would uh, would want to run it right now, but uh, uh, it's good that I'm opening it up and taking a peek at it. So let's let's look at the side. Um, you can see that I took quite a few pieces off. So the starter has gone, the alternator was sitting here, I took it out um, then you know I removed all the old wires because they were all busted up or uh, or disconnected anyway um, the fuel filter is, uh, fuel filter holder uh, is still there, I'm going to take that off as well because I have to do that to get the brackets uh, off um, overall you know I have to take the the sides off and uh, you know the exhaust uh, area that seems to be completely uh, rusted up and whatnot. I need to see if what I can do with that. Um, left the air cleaner on for the time being, but uh, that's so easily removed. I, I didn't even bother doing that. So um, looking inside uh, the, the cavity there, where uh, where the starter would go, there's a lot of crud in the bottom. And it's really a mix of dirt and oil, and it, it's like at least a half an inch of uh, of crud in there. I'll I'll show you in a minute. Um, the um, the engine is anti-clockwise running, so the starter is anti-clockwise running, in order to to, uh, to get it to run in the right uh, in the right direction. Um, I tested the starter, it still works, it's, it's good. The alternator is dead as a doornail. So, and in this end you can tell that I took the fuel lift pump out. Um, you know, there's no real gaskets, there's a lot of crud though. Uh, you see that I took this panel out, the gaskets are uh, basically the yeah, so if you can see the, the gasket, uh, it's pretty bad. It's completely ripped up, so that needs to be uh, needs to be replaced. And you know, there's bonus points for uh, these who uh, the people that see what the issue is here. That's how I found it. Um, so not a not a super big deal, but it could have cost. Uh, some issues. I, I think that must be a fuel return uh, fuel return line that we see there. So, uh, anyways, um, sorry about that. I zoomed out a little bit too much. I took the flywheel off, and then at the at the bottom of the cow, I guess. Uh, is you know crud and crud and crud and it's actually you know quite a bit if you go in with a screwdriver uh, you know it's pretty messy um, the one thing that I'm finding though is uh, with, with a lot of the bolts that let me let me show you that 
that a lot of the bolts, the actual stud comes out, uh, but the actual uh, nut is is not moving at all. So, uh, so I'm I'm hoping I can remove the nuts and reuse the studs because oh no, the studs look good. It's they're not they're not bad at all. They can be reused, but uh, you know it's just the fact that that they come out easier than the uh, the the rusted solid nut. Out of these three, only the bottom one there is actually where I removed the nut. The other ones, the, the studs basically came out. And a slightly better look at the innards here. You see on the left and the right and the left, you can see the fuel pumps and the connection in between those. You see the fuel lines. The big fuel line coming in from the side here is the, is the main fuel line that comes out of the fuel filter straight into the pumps. Um, then it, it, it goes up. Um, and then you see here uh, the injector lines. Um, actually, is that right? Yeah, I guess here's the fuel coming in. Uh, I don't know what it does there. Uh, Anyway, that's what it is. There's a few other pieces that I uh, took off that are actually quite interesting uh, to see. Um, this basically yanks up the start and stop or the uh, the engine cut lever when it is uh, when it is actuated. Um, probably was built or, or put in there as sort of a safety. It was all uh, in, in series almost with uh, an oil pressure switch and a temperature switch as well. So I think this was uh, added as a safety. Um, it still works. It looks a little bit ratty, but, uh, but it works well. Um, I don't think it had much to suffer. Uh, this is not something that you use a lot. But, uh, but definitely, uh, you know, it's still there. Then the other thing that I pulled off is the uh, oil pressure switch. Very simple switch, basically closes the circuit. And, you know, once it closes the circuit, it's probably using or activating the, uh, the actuator. Um, very simple. Um, you know, I'll have to think about what I want to do with that if I want to continue using something like that or if I just want to uh, make the oil pressure, uh, create an oil, put an oil pressure sensor in and hook it up to a more modern uh, generator and engine control module that can deal with that. Another item that I took off is this uh, temperature switch. It's, uh, it's rather hefty actually, it's quite big compared to other temperature switches that I've seen in the past. And uh, this one, I'm trying to find what it actually is and does. I don't know if you can see the number properly, but it says 33080-210. Right? I can, I can find it, I can look it up, but uh, there is no specifications on it and no original manufacturer uh, who was on there. There used to be a sticker on the back side that's obviously no longer there after 40 plus years so so I don't know exactly what the specs were for it. Um, you know I can guess but again I could uh, I could put an actual uh, you know uh, sensor a temperature sensor in and feed it into uh, my more modern uh, engine control that I'm thinking of getting for this uh, engine. Um, so one last thing is the uh, the bolts or the studs actually I should say. Um, this one again came uh, came out uh, just on the stud side and uh, or the bottom end. And let me see if I Not really wanting to uh, to focus properly. Uh, the funny thing is, there are some weird sizes of studs in this uh, in this engine. So I've been trying to look this particular one up and sort of measuring the bottom end, the top end, and um, 
you know, not getting not getting a lot of uh, fines at all. Um, if anything, um, I find the ones that are a little bit taller um, and have that that bottom end uh, have a bit more thread there. Uh, but I can't use this thread because this is one that uh, that connects the starter motor, and um, this protrudes into um, into the housing. So if this is too long, it's actually going to hit the flywheel and uh, and other mechanical pieces. So it needs to be this short. So the only thing that I can think of, basically, get the longer one, cut a piece off, grind it down a bit. Um, clean up the thread and then use that if you, if I have to replace the whole thing. It it looks good still. So if I could get the nut off, then uh, then I can potentially reuse it.